Hello, I have an apology to make. In the video you're about to watch, I mistakenly called the Arteon shooting brake the Arteon sport brake about 11 times in 10 minutes. I'm sorry, but if that bothers you, go and watch something else like Shmi or something. Otherwise, watch this because I'm quite proud of it. It's not utterly terrible like my videos usually are. Hello and welcome back to the channel of nonsense. Dear viewer, I wish to talk about one thing today and that is Volkswagen cars. Because although Volkswagen makes very good, capable, competent cars, I don't think you're ever going to come out of a Volkswagen showroom with your loins ablaze with ardour and desire, not the clap. But I think that might be about to change with this. The red car behind me. Yes, it's the new Volkswagen Arteon Sport Brake, and no, it's probably not going to give you an STD, but look at it! It's beautiful, and you might want to do things to it, which is probably okay in this kind of lockdown age. We're all a bit bored, but it's the most beautiful car I think Volkswagen has made in the past, God knows, 20 years, something like that. It's swoopy, it's svelte, it's an estate Sport Brake shooting brake version of the Arteon, which came out in 2017. So this is kind of going to go up against the Passat estate, which has a bigger boot and costs five grand less. This is a 35 grand car. This is a two litre petrol, it's 38 grand, and it's got enough options on it to take it up to 46,000 pounds. But I don't care because look at it, it looks bloody brilliant. Uh, best car ever, end of review. Okay, you actually want to know stuff about it. Right, okay, all Arteon Sport Brakes get LED headlights, um, which aren't on at the moment because the car's turned off, and it gets black bits because it's the R-Line version, and it looks good, doesn't it? Let's check out the back, though. The first thing you notice when you look at the side and the back of the Arteon Sport Brake is that there's quite a lot of it. It's 4.86 meters long, which is about 10 centimeters longer than a Passat Estate. I do really love the rear lights though. To my eyes, they look a bit like the old lights on the S-Class Coupe, but turned into a Sport Brake. I don't know, I'm probably talking nonsense. It's got these uh, slightly naff fake exhaust things. If I had a stick, I would shove it somewhere. Um, and it's got an electrically opening boot. Now, the boot is only two litres bigger than the one in the normal Arteon hatchback, and that's what, a bottle of Coke or something? Um, but hey, it's 453 litres. Volkswagen says they only measure up to about here though, so actually it has got a lot more boot space than the normal Arteon, it's just all up here in the ether. The Passat Estate has 85 litres more boot space than this thereabouts, so it is more practical with the Passat Estate and a lot cheaper, but it doesn't make me want to... Obviously the Sport Brake is trying to be a more practical version of the Arteon, so I'm going to talk about practicality for a minute. The boot, you've got this sliding load cover that you can slap about. Um, it has got he says under the floor, it's got a big spare wheel well, which has a subwoofer in it, because it's got the upgraded Harman Kardon, Carmen Hardon sound system. And there is actually space around it to pack soft things. You have no way of flipping the back seats down. There are no little toggle things here, which is a bit of a miss. And you've got a big ramp up. So when you flip the back seats down, you've got to heave them up this ramp to get them in. It wouldn't make a very good hearse for Auntie Nora's coffin, save on the funeral costs. So um, just, just pony up for a proper hearse. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's a big space with nets and stuff. It's just a shame that some of the opportunities for making it really practical have been missed. In terms of backseat space, the Arton Sport Brake is bloody brilliant. I've got more knee room, foot room and anything room really than I would ever need back here. I'm six foot three, remember, so your kids will be fine. And although I've disappeared, my headroom doesn't disappear when I lean back. I can sit with my head on the headrest and my head's not touching the ceiling, so that swoopy roof line just doesn't impinge on passenger space. It's really well done. I don't think I've had this much footroom since, I don't know, Skoda Superb or a presidential limousine. I like it in here. It's still got the prison jeans bum pocket here, you know, when you're walking around prison holding on to your protector, um, that's still there. You've got little pockets here. I've got a child seat in here. It's all very nice. This one's got a full length sunroof, but it shuts because there is no sun. 
Now up front, there's actually quite a lot of new stuff to talk about because in making the sport brake, Volkswagen's redesigned quite a lot of the Arteon's interior up front. There's new dash panel, new center console, new door cards, and it's all designed to make it feel a bit more like the Touareg. Um, I had a Touareg and it, it does feel like that, but it's still very posh. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, there's mild squidge going on there. Oh, I hate myself. Um, there's a new infotainment system called MIB3. I only saw Men in Black 1 and 2, so I'm not sure if Will Smith's in this one, but it's got wireless Apple CarPlay. It's got um, buttons which are physical but don't pop in, which is annoying, so there's no feedback there. It's weird. It's a really old, quite low-res screen. You can see the pixels, which is disgusting in 2021. But it's got some of the newer functions on it that you get in Volkswagen's newest, most annoyingest infotainment system, such as, he says, I don't know, it's just, there's just some slightly faffy things. But you've got all your climate control buttons down here. Again, they're physical buttons, but they're not, if you see what I mean. They're just little pieces of plastic you touch. Um, so your heated seats and all the climate controls are down here. There's a slider for fan speed, so it's actually quite logically laid out. I don't hate it, it's quite good. There isn't any wireless charging in this particular car, but I think it's an option. It's just a bit of a miss on the spec sheet for this one. So yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag. The new stuff is fine, the wireless Apple CarPlay is obviously a good thing, but the actual resolution of the screen and some of the older looking bits of software, I don't know, feels a bit like a UNESCO World Heritage Site in infotainment form, but it's all right, it's all right. You've got the kind of non-clicky buttons on the steering wheel as well, which I'm not a big fan of, but it's the future, guys, blah, blah, blah. It's worth noting that the interior trims on here are actually really nice, and Volkswagen does give you the option to have genuine wood on here, so you can have wood on the inside and also wood when you look at it from the outside. <laughs> I'm such a child. Right, let's go and drive it. This bit isn't going to be very long, just as a warning. So, what is the Volkswagen Arteon Sport Brake like to drive then? Well, docile and inoffensive to the point of being, well, comfortable and a bit boring. But it's never designed to be a sporty car. This has got to wait for Arteon Sport Brake R for that. This with the 190 petrol, it's, I don't know, it's quicker than you would think. 0 to 60 is 7.8 seconds, but actually the engine's been really tuned for low down and mid range torque, so it feels almost diesel-y, which is strange. I've been getting 35 mpg very easily on stop start driving to drop my daughter off this morning in town. And it's on the 910 pound adaptive dampers, which I've set to comfort and it's comfortable, it's quiet, it's relaxed. You could do big, big miles in this across to, you know, your ski chalet in Verbier when you're allowed out there. And yeah, you'd have no discomfort whatsoever. It's exactly what you thought it would be like. I'm sorry, that's not very exciting. I have given it the driving like a twat test and um, yeah, it, it understeers quite heavily when you drive it like a lunatic on wet roads, but You've got to be going quite fast for that to happen. You can make decent progress in it, and it's just very well resolved. Not particularly exciting, but what did you expect? But I'm quite excited to see what the R is like with 320 horsepower and a four-wheel drive system. That should be quite nice, a bit AMG maybe, like the old CLS 63 shooting brake, which is one of my favorite cars of all time. I'm just waiting for them to depreciate a bit more. It's worth mentioning that this is front wheel drive only, and it has been really wet, and I've been impressed with how little this wheel spins. It finds decent traction. Obviously, 320 newton meters of torque isn't loads, so it's not going to overwhelm the tyres, but I'm still impressed. The engine sounds a little bit coarse. It's not a sporty noise by any stretch of the imagination, but it doesn't need to be. It's not a sports car. Um, don't know what else to say really. The paddles are quite nice and clicky. Uh, they're standard plastic paddles that you get in the Audi R8. <laughs> um, so you can say that your Volkswagen sporting shooting sport brake has a little bit of Audi R8 in it. A little bit. Anyway, enough about me and my German fantasies. Back to you, Tim. So, what do I think of the new Volkswagen Arteon Sport Brake? Well, it's a sexy Volkswagen. I can't remember the last time we could say that. My only slight worry is that I'm not sure who actually wants to buy a sexy Volkswagen. But hey, Volkswagen says 55% of these are going to go to fleets and company car buys and things like that. And if 
you get a company car version of this, then, well, I'd probably buy a lottery ticket because it's a good day. In my mind, it kind of makes the Passat Estate a little bit redundant. The Passat Estate's about sexy as corduroy trousers, whereas this comes romping in with its gold lame hot pants with a posing pouch. I just would have one of these any day of the week. I think it's worth £5,000 more. Sure, there are some niggles. The infotainment thing is it's a bit old now, to be honest. I know I complain about the new ones, so I can't really give Volkswagen a break on that. I want to drive the R version because this is brisk. But I'd like to see what the chassis can do when it's been tweaked by Volkswagen's R division. But other than that, and the price, I think it's a pretty bloody good car. I really quite like it. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit my bell, and I'll see you soon, next time. In a couple of weeks, I'm reviewing another red car from the Volkswagen Group, but it's got a V8 and a Bentley badge on it. Hmm.